Man, speak to quarters. Well, that's the gun. Stand by this tavern battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn, stop ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. forget my 18th birthday. Usually when a man's young, birthdays are joyous occasions. But there I was in the year 1794, young midshipman hornblower, and I was a prisoner on board a French privateer. It was the saddest birthday I ever had. And here's the way it began. A week before my birthday, I was adrift on the Bay of Biscay in an open boat with four British sailors and ten captured Frenchmen. Midshipman Hornblower had lost his first command. Don't take it too hard, Mr. Hornblower, sir. We're bound to get picked up sometime. Might even be by our own ship, the Indefatigable, sir. Wish we'd never left the Indefatigable, Matthews. It wasn't your fault that blasted brass ship floundered under us. I'd only remembered to patch up that hole in the hull, Matthews, if I'd remembered in time. It was below the water line, sir. Below or above, I should have had my wits about me. It was that cargo of rice done the damage, sir. Soaking up every drop of water that come in. By the time we realized it, it swelled all up. Spit that cargo ship apart like it was a pea pod. The Mary Gallant, my first command. I ain't thinking of happened to anybody. The old man... <laughs> Beg your pardon. Captain Ballou won't blame you for it. I blame myself. Well, don't you see, Matthews? I, I was ordered to take over the Mary Gallant after the indefatigable stopped her. She, she, she was a prize of war. I had orders to sail her to England, not to the bottom. I blame myself, and I shall tell Captain Pulu so when I make my report. Yes, sir. Mr. Ornblower, sir. What? It's come. The wind's back in. Yes, I notice, Matthews. We'd better take in the sea anchor and oil sail, sir. Well, if it holds, we may manage to clear Ushant and set a true course for England. Hunter! Aye, sir. Hunter! Aye, sir. Haul in that sea anchor. Aye, sir. Hunter, call our prisoners to attention. You're still rated my petty officer, you know. Hi, you up there, father. You monsieurs, uh, wake up on your feet. Uh, well, what is uh, what is happening? We're hoisting sail. Have your men stand by the halyards. Lively now. Bien, monsieur. Oh, okay. Come through. You don't seem to want to, sir. They're arguing with their officers. So I noticed. Here he comes now. Now, that's far enough, Stan, monsieur. Uh, sir, I, I ask pardon. In this small open boat, it is you ours. Speak from where you are. I ordered your men to make sail. We, we may interfere as you are, setting a strange course. Now what's strange about it? You have turned the tiller to wade west. Huh. That is no way to reach the coast. It is. The coast of England. Monsieur, monsieur, to, to wait for England, this is insane. A small open boat, it is... Hundreds of miles. Yes, it the is. The French coast is no more than 30 or 40 miles, Monsieur Lieutenant. I'm not a lieutenant. I'm a midshipman. Bien, bien. Well, keep your distance. This is madness. My men will not obey. Pets. Oh, how old are you? 16, 17? I shall be 18 next week. A child. A mere child. How can you give orders? 
I am more than twice your age, a seasoned mariner. There is only one course, to aid for sure. France or whatever, it matters not. One step further and this pistol will go off. Oh, you, you, you would not shoot me. One step and I'll pull the trigger. You order your men to hoist sail. The first one that disobeys will be shot. Oh, me, monsieur, you... Give that order. Yeah. Is it a word? Well, that's that. Aye, Mr. Hornblower, sir. A proper ferocious you looked with that pistol. Mind if I make one suggestion, sir? Suggestion what? Next time, you better cock the pistol, sir. What? Way it is now, it wouldn't even fire. <laughs> yes, many things I had to learn when I was young midshipman Hornblower. <laughs> I remember how my knees shook as I sat in the stern sheets and how furious I was with myself for getting to cock a pistol. Well, the tiny open boat sailed westward and for two days there was no sign of a sail anywhere except mine. And then, at dawn of the third day... Mr. Hornbauer, sit still. Hmm? Wake up. Uh, oh, yes, yes. There's a sail bearing down on us. Sail? Where? Off the port quarter. Where? Well, it might be our own ship, Matthews. I, I dreamt that the indefatigable would pick us up. I... Oh. Yes, sir. It's still far from full daylight, but the top amber of that vessel is clear to make out. Yes. It ain't the indefatigable, sir. No. Yep. Sorry. No, it's not. Still and all, there might be other British ships standing blockade off this coast. It might be French. Aye, sir. It might. We'll know soon enough. It's coming right down on us. <laughs> Welcome aboard, sir, to the French privateer, Peak. I am Captain Newville, and you? I am Midshipman Hornblower of his Britannic Majesty's ship, Indefatigable. You were in an open boat? We captured a prize. I was put aboard in command. It, it sank. Hmm, regrettable. And now the tables are turned, eh? The queue of your prize are free. It is you who are prisoners. No, no, no. Your pistols, please. And that uh, Dirk. I shall show you to your quarters. Will you come? Well, now, this ain't bad, Mr. Oldblower, sir. Oh, you like the quarters, Matthews? Come in. Oh, Captain Nerville. You are surprised, Monsieur Rondblower. There is a reason for my quick return. Two of your crew are proving difficult. Um, Carson and Hunter, perhaps? Whatever their names. They have been ordered to do work aboard the peak, and they refuse. And why in Bridesgate shouldn't they refuse? Oh, that's enough, Matthews. Captain Nerville, my men and I are prisoners. By the International Code governing treatment of prisoners... I am no, not no, concerned no. with the code. You forget, I am a privateer. I set my own rule. But now there are no but. buts, my dear young man. They shall work, or I will have them thrown over the side. You wouldn't dare. I assure you, it is highly probable. And this man also, his name? Matthews. Matthews. Well, Monsieur Rondelot, Matthews, you will go between decks and tell Hunter, Carson, and Smith to comply. And you also. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> I make an exception only in the case of officers. My thanks. How old are you? What, sir? Well, never mind. Very young, I am certain. But you will become more ardent with age. Now, my friend. Is there any courtesy I can extend? Well, I, I don't know what. Uh, perhaps some, well, reading matter? Well, I fear I have only professional books. Oh. Rangin's Principles of Navigation and Lebrun's Handbook on Seamanship. Well, they're French. You can read French? <laughs> Badly, but, well, I might as well learn. Bien, bien, you shall have them. And you shall also have the freedom of the ship, Monsieur Rambler. But do not attempt anything. My crew have most sharp eyes. <laughs> Shall I light the lamp, sir? Yes, yes well. I, well, I might as well read. Yes, my despair was as deep as the pit, as wide and endless as all the sorrows of youth. And I felt most particularly low spirited on that one special day. Today's date, sir? Ain't it July the 4th? Well, congratulate me, Matthews. It's my birthday. Now. Born 18 years ago, July the 4th, 1776. Did you ever have a birthday cake, Matthews? Me, sir? No. I did, every year that I can remember, until I joined the Navy. A cake now. 
Better than ship's biscuit any time outside. Was it a good cake, sir? Oh, always. My mother baked it. Must have been then. And one year she put candles on it. Then. Candles? It's on top, small candles, and lighted them one by one for each birthday. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you don't sound impressed, Matthews. Don't know as I am, sir. Who can enjoy a cake with candle drippings all over it? Oh, no, you blew them all out before they dripped it. It was good luck, Matthew. As lighted candles meant good luck. Hmm. Well, no candles today. No, sir. No cake either. Mr. Ormblow, it's, it's awful stuffy cooped up in this cabin. Mm. Why don't you spend some time on deck? I will, Matthews. Tomorrow. <laughs> On deck today, eh, Monsieur Rambler? Yes, sir. And how do you like our good ship, Peak? Oh, well, your, your ship's better, yeah? Yeah? Yes, sir. It means she handles well, Captain. Oh, <laughs> so she does, Monsieur Rambler, extremely well. Fast and light. And there is none better before the wind. Hmm. Now make yourself at liberty. Ahoy, ahoy, there, look out. Any sail? No sail. Morning, Matthews. Morning, sir. No, no, keep on working. Aboard this vessel, you take orders from them. Aye. Ah, holy stone the deck and pick oakum. Well, you had the same duties aboard the indefatigable. Aye, ah, and used to swear about them. I wouldn't swear now, even though our ship's got twice the deck this has. Well, at least you're kept busy. I don't know which is worse, being busy oh, or just... Oh, oh, the deck! Sail! Oh, sail! A sail! Where? Oh, Matthews! The lookout's pointing towards the starboard bar. Aye, sir. Well, up on the shrouds, quick, man. Well, well, Matthews. Well, speak up, man. Is it British? It, it's heading this way. It's, it's the indefatigable, sir. What? Or I'm a blind man. I'd swear it's the indefatigable. <laughs> More years now than I care to count, but uh, I remember that moment well. Myself as a midshipman, one day beyond my 18th birthday, a prisoner aboard the French privateer Peak. I blamed myself for being a prisoner, but, but my heart jumped at the prospect of rescue. A sail had been sighted. It was only a speck on the distant horizon, but it was instantly recognizable as a glimpse of home. The indefatigable. It's caught sight of us and set course this way. It's her own ship, Matthews. Sir, I might have been mistaken. All that's shown is the top gallant. No, you're not mistaken, Matthews. I'd recognize that cut anywhere, at any distance. You can make out more of her now. Yes. Yes. Captain Pelew is lo loosing her royals. All sails set. Oh, Matthews, we'll, we'll be back on board in time for grog. Do not set your hopes too high, Monsieur Ombler. Oh. Captain Merville. Oui. <laughs> your late ship, I understand. Yes, I... Uh, possibly. A frigate, is she not? A British frigate. Without guns, you, three to one. <laughs> First, it must come within range. What is our best point of sailing? I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> oh, please do not look so noble, Monsieur Rambler. I could induce you to give the information. There are ways. But fortunately for you, it is unnecessary. There is no ship on Earth, especially none of His Britannic Majesty's clumsy frigates, that can outsail the peak running before the wind. I don't believe it. Then you shall see. Where is ship? Stand by! Come on out! Sweet! Come on! Sweet! Well, you see, Monsieur Rambler. Yes. Mm, already your indefatigable is falling far astern. Yes, I can see. Yes. Two more hours and we shall have one of our states under. It's very likely. For certain. <laughs> Close that door, quick. Aye, sir. Fetch those mattresses off the cots. The mattresses? Aye, aye, sir. Paper, paper, I need paper. What? Oh, the books. Ah, I hate to tear up Grandjean's principles of navigation. <laughs> oh, don't stand there, Matthews, over here. Here. Aye, sir. Mr. Ornblower, sir. No, I haven't taken leave of my senses, if that's what you're thinking. Just now rip those mattresses open. Rip them? Yes, yes. Here, man, come on. Oh, good. Pull it out, Matthews. Pull it out. Pile, pile the straw up here on, on top of the paper, huh? That's it. Well, now, now fetch me the lamp. Aye, sir. 
careful of it, sir. It's fair off. Yes, the hotter the better. There's grease inside, hot grease, and luckily it's lighted. And the grease goes over the store like that. Now, Matthews, we'll take one page from Principles of Navigation and make a taper of it. So? By the Lord, Harry, sir. Fire! Ah, you know what's behind that wall? Yes, sir, the paint locker. There's nothing burns like paint, Like sir. paint or dry wood or cordage soaked with pitch and tar. That taper I gave you, quick. Here you are, sir. The peak is sailing before the wind, and this cabin's in the star and well below decks. If, if it gets started, the wind will blow the flames for it. If huh? they don't discover it first. Yeah, we'll not talk of that. You'd better start it, sir. Yes. Looks like a candle, doesn't it? Sir? A small, flickering candle for a birthday cake. Well, it'll make a brighter flame by far, I hope. All right, Matthews, we'll get up on deck. You have started a bonfire, sir. No, no, no. Leave, leave the door open and stay behind us. Might help them to spot the fire, sir. Well, can't have a fire without a decent draft. And either way, it's a gamble now. Come on, up on deck now. And do your best to act as if nothing were amiss. It was a reckless sortie, but, well, completely hopeless. The bow gun was well attended. As I led the way, I came full face against Captain Nerville. Sir, you cannot shoot us in cold blood. Cold, I boil with despair. My beautiful ship peak. You shall be thrown overside. You shall be... I advise you to put up that pistol and surrender, Captain Nerville. Those are the guns of the indefatigable. turned and looked. And I remember how I looked. I stared with my heart in my eyes. The peak lay idle, wallowing in smoke and ruin, and bearing down with all sail set, a, a wave creaming white under her bowsprit came the indefatigable. She rounded to, her cables length to windward, her gun ports open at the ready. First came launches to fight the fire, and then, swarming over the side, came an armed party with Lieutenant Mason in charge. I, I shall never forget the amazement in his eyes when he caught sight of us. Good Lord! You, Hornblower? What are you doing here? Well, sir, you oh, see... never mind now. You'll make your report to Captain Pellew. Now, where's the captain of this wreck? I am the captain, sir. Ah, extremely bad luck, sir. Lieutenant Mason of His Majesty's ship, indefatigable. I will accept your surrender, sir. Midshipman Hornblower reporting to Captain Ballou. I called you in for some further questions. Hornblower, it's not entirely clear. What, sir? You devote most of your report to the rice ship. The Mary Gallant? Yes. You appear to blame yourself for losing her. It was my fault, sir. I will assess responsibility. You mean I, I, I'm not to blame, sir? I believe I have already so stated. Go along. <laughs> Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels of T.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.